Let's talk about providing behavioral health services in rural India. And to discuss this, I'm really glad to have with us Kadiswara Rao. And uh, Mr. Rao works for SCARF India, which is an organization that provides behavioral health throughout India. And they have greatly leveraged telehealth to overcome barriers and provide access to behavioral health services. So, Rao, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, Rai. Thank you yeah. for inviting me also for this. Nice yeah. And maybe yeah. you can start with uh, just letting us know, um, if, if you could just tell me uh, about SCARF India, uh, tell us a little bit about the organization and what's your role in the organization? Yeah, so SCARF India stands for Schizophrenia Research Foundation. This is one of the few institutions in India uh, uh, in South Asia, which has been recognized by WHO. So that way, SCARF is the only institution in India which has been recognized by WHO as the Collaborative Center for Research and Training in Mental Health. And SCARF, uh, working in the field of mental health since 1984. And it was founded by Padma Bhushan, Dr. M. Sarada Menon, uh, was the who was the first woman psychiatrist in India. And uh, she recently passed away. When she was 99, she recently passed away. Uh, our intention is to increase the awareness level in the community, whether it's a rural community and urban community, and identify the mentally ill person and then treat them at the community level, sometimes to the clinic level. If required, we admit them for a short while, basically for the acute management. And we do have three rehabilitation services of SCARF, three different locations we have. Uh, where we cater to serve for the people who require support from treatment, they may require sometimes rehabilitation also. So we admit them if they require like that. Okay. So apart from admitting these uh, patients' uh, mental health issues, we do have a lot of training and awareness programs in the communities, basically to address the issues varies from child to age to. So, for example, recently uh, with the cities rise, cities rise. I'm I'm sure you know about this global initiation. Uh, cities rise and other few other institutions at the global level. Uh, we having tie up tie with them and uh, uh, Scarf India is one of the site in India where we do a lot of research with the youth. At the uh, when they go to school or after school and colleges and people are working from 12 to 24 years age group. And we, we do have a lot of interventions for this youth and mental health. It's one of the important area which we have been doing it for the past one decade plus. And we do have, and at the same time simultaneously, we have something called uh, dementia, which is uh, age related issues, mental health issues. And we have a exclusive dementia care center exclusive dementia OP is also there. And apart from more regular activities of you no, know, where we do cater to serve for the adults in mental health issues. Okay, mm -hmm. so treatment is one and awareness program is two. And also we are doing some rehabilitation activities. Research is definitely is part of our lineup. Okay, so we do need to know about certain things and we wanted to share what we learned from the little things we learned from the community in India, or this rural and urban community, and to the world world. And every two years once, I'm sure you know about something called ICONS, International Conference on Schizophrenia. Uh, so far, actually, uh, we have conducted actually 10 such conferences. It's an international conference every two years once. We organize this. We invite the people uh, across the globe and around uh, every year we used to get around uh, 500 international participants for that. Okay, so teaching, training, we have a MD, uh, we have a DNB in psychiatry, where it's equal to MD in psychiatry. So Government of India recognized us, Government of India, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India recognized our institution as one of the collaborative center. And we do a lot of programs and research programs and international programs uh, in the rural and urban areas, uh, in and around uh, wherever we, the catchment area which we are addressing to do it. And we are also partners with a few other institutions in India where we, our technical support we want to share with them. 
not just with in not just with scarf not just only with in tamil nadu or chennai and we want to share our knowledge and we have a lot of professionals and potentials we have in, in scarf so which we wanted to actually share with the rest of india so that they can also learn from uh, our learnings and also uh, modify accordingly you know it cannot be di directly made use of like the same thing but at least in india we can use certain things modify a little bit modify according to that and they can they are using it and we are also technical partners for up institutions in india yeah okay. so so the organization about, started so the organization yeah. started off focusing on schizophrenia yeah. and then it broadened to all of behavioral health and you serve youth all the way to dementia older adults uh and a big part of what you do is research um and then also training uh so for the research do you have like a research team uh yes. is is it a whole like department for research how does that work yeah we have an exclusive department of research <clears throat> research we will be doing in all areas whether it may be clinical non clinical and all but wherever whatever we do wherever we do you know it we need to have a exclusive department of clinical uh, research department and where we have a, a, a institutional ethics committee and institutional research committee also and where we will be, we'll be having a, the key people from outside outside our institution so that we will bias will be minimized and lot of people so uh, uh, multi uh, various walks of life they are part of that and they are also suggesting us to uh, do a good research out of that only so we have an exclusive team an exclusive department uh, it is working in an scarf for the research activities which we do yes and is your focus on behave providing behavioral health services to rural areas rural india is that right or just all of india Firstly, we, uh, we uh, predominantly work in Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu is a state in uh, southern parts of India, mm -hmm. and where we do share our collaboration, research collaborations, other activities with uh, other parts of India too. Mm -hmm. Okay, see. Sangat is one institution, and uh, there is Tata Institute, and uh, there is one more institution, and uh, there are a few other institutions also where they have a lot of other activities. across the this thing and we have some institutions working in calcutta delhi uh, nagpur so andhra pradesh telangana so we do have a lot of other uh, other research partners we do have that so we will be the technical partners and we will be jointly doing some activities with them so yeah. we are majorly working in tamil nadu only okay and what if what if you found the particular needs of those in india for behavioral health services are like what what are the behavioral health needs of those in india yeah see uh, uh, we predominantly see the depression mm -hmm. okay and uh, uh, and we, we also see this come of the uh, uh, severe mental illness like you no know, schizophrenia also we see so you asked me the question at the you asked me the question you no know, in the beginning itself uh, which is you no know, uh, are we only talking targeting the schizophrenia no we don't uh, target only schizophrenia but uh, we ke kept the name is like that is because schizophrenia is the one which is leaving a lot of disability in individual compared to other minor mental illness like depression and anxiety mm -hmm. that can be treated for a while and uh, they can get get rid of that shortly with, with the support uh, uh, with the medicines or without support of medicines also sometimes with the family support they can come out of that but whereas schizophrenia is the one which is leaving a lot of disability in individual and most of is uh, Uh, potential is getting impaired since we wanted to learn about that learn with the family and uh, and want to do something for the uh, community hence we kept the name like that so that's one of the reasons actually why we kept uh, schizophrenia research foundation and where with the individuals uh, got a lot of deterioration because of the illness and we wanted to see that actually we want to focus not just only on the uh, uh, treatment with the pills alone you know there are there are so, so many other things like you know psycho social rehabilitation so that is one of the year recent almost such as 20 years we are working on that area is called uh, psycho social rehabilitation so when you say psychological rehabilitation we will we will try to see that you know how to uh, uh, reduce or increase the medicines depends upon the symptoms of the individual and functions of the individual whereas uh, rehabilitation is you no know, we want to see the more focus on the uh, uh, functions 
where you see that you no know, people with mental illness do deterioration. I told you deterioration is there, and they may lose job, they may lose uh, other family members also has to take care of them. Hence, they cannot go for work. For example, uh, the breadwinner is father, and uh, you know if he is affected, you no, know, the the child the child will be also affected because the education will be the biggest question mark. If the breadwinner is the earning for the house and uh, and if the wife is uh, wife, the, suppose the wife want to go for work and wife has to take care of the husband, hence it is very difficult for her to go for work and earn for the livelihood. Mm -hmm. So there are so many things which is affected because of this mental, uh, chronic mental illnesses. So hence we, what SCARF is doing is for the past two decades, especially after uh, we have done a lot of things, especially after the tsunami struck in India. Okay, in 2004, probably I will talk to you about a disaster at the end. So we are we are catering to a lot of activities which is related to psychosocial rehabilitation where we are trying to get basic things like, you know, uh, disability, the disability certification for them and disability benefits for them and making them be part of the any disability groups and also uh, getting them to, you know, generally because of stigma attached to mental illness, and uh, these people are being actually <clears throat> secluded and not included in any of these things at all. So hence, we wanted to do that as like, how to this, how these people can get their social entitlements. It mm -hmm. is the basic rights. Mm -hmm. And uh, we as a, a SCARF team at the community level, I the team, what we're doing is we are trying to get all these things done. And we have around actually 26 activities under this psychosocial rehabilitation. It's okay. We want to get, for example, recently also after the corona, corona stuck, uh, I think the whole global has got affected because of that. So it is not, uh, it is very, magnitude is very, very high in the rural areas in India too. Since what happened, you know, we are, we are trying to reach them, catch them, please, because many people are ignored about these people's basic medicines. They are, they, the medicines are there. Already the situation is very, very bad. And so-called the normal people are just giving a lot of disturbance because of the pandemic. And people with uh, psychosocial uh, psychosocial issues have got a lot of issue uh, problems, and we we as the team in the community we are trying to address those things and try to get them as minimal as possible from the government. We negotiate with the government, and people are telling about we are only targeting about other people, and these people are very uh, marginal people. They are ignored by the government and other uh, institutions also. So SCARF mm -hmm. is trying to see that, and we we, we wanted to bring them to the limelight. And I explained to the government and other institutions also their rights and their needs also. And we have done a quick assessment of needs assessment in the community, sometimes over phone, sometimes with the video call and all these things. And we have presented to the government and also the other non-government organizations how best we can able to reach them and actually to cater to their basic needs. You know, sometimes even getting their one square meal a day so itself is a big issue there in, uh, was there in uh, during the uh, COVID situation in India. Hmm. Okay, other especially people with men, uh, mental illnesses was completely ignored by the family, by the community also. Wow. So we we, we wow. have we try to get these things done as much as possible. So as part of the psychosocial rehabilitation. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So you find that you know people with severe mental illness like schizophrenia, uh, they're not getting their basic rights or needs met by the government, by their families. There's a lot of stigma. Um, so not only are you treating the individuals with schizophrenia, you're also trying to address the systemic issues, the government issues, the society issues around the treatment of those with severe mental illness. And part of the way that you do that is by providing training, building awareness. Um, and uh, so what have been some of your successes in doing that? How have you seen your success uh, with with the efforts that uh, Scarf India has done? Yeah, so this is not an easy thing which is happening actually because uh, uh, in India, uh, globally we can see that a lot of uh, very very less budget has been allotted for health that in mental health. India is very very negligible amount only is allocated for this mental health budget. Hence, the activities which we cater to may be example of uh, even giving awareness or training. These things are almost nil, almost nil. That in the rural areas is almost nil, nothing is happening at all. Hence, what we try to do is, so I, you asked me one more question which I want to answer is that, you know, uh, what is my role in SCARF? 
So my role in SCARF as a Koti Shwara and I'm the assistant director of SCARF. Apart from serving in the assistant director of SCARF community mental health team, I'm the heading the community mental health team of SCARF. And also I'm uh, heading one more department is called the training uh, of students and uh, other community level staff in mental health. So these are two departments I'm holding. It. So apart from these two, uh, uh, out of SCARF, I'm also part of Tamil Nadu State Mental Health Authority. This new Mental Health Care 2017, we have a new Mental Health Care Act 2017. According to that, we have to, each state has to form a state mental health authority. So I am the one of the key member at the state level for the Tamil Nadu state. So having said that, I have a little bit of role to play as the policy making. So not only just doing at the grassroots level with the minimal amount, minimal liberalization, which we have uh, with, the, with the funds we have, you know, we staff may want to do a lot of things, but what are the minimal amount we get it, we can we can able to just go around and make some noise. But being the part of this uh, uh, mental health, uh, uh, state mental health team, so I can able to also contribute some voice for these people and also plan for the, uh, what we can do at the, what we can do are the mental health uh, services in the rural areas. So how best we can able to uh, uh, minimize uh, our, our role in that play that way and also increase, make the government to do certain things. For example, we have an excellent uh, team called uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, uh, each, each, each state has just got that now, district mental health program. So district mental health program, we, we can join hands with them. We can join hands with them and they should not uh, see you as a threat rather than we can join hands with them. Because whenever you, as a government, non-government organization, SCARF is a non-government organization, there are government institutions are there. When we go and suggest something to them, they should not feel the threat to them. Okay, instead they have to join hands with us or we have to join hands with them and say, look, there is a gap in mental health here. So I do this, you do this. So both of us can do something for the people. That is the way actually we are actually working at. And for the past 25 years, I'm two and a half decades, I'm working with SCARF and mental health, where we are trying to see that actually wherever small things possible, we work with the local existing NGO. For example, when you want to do an awareness or training program, there's something called a private-public partnership private public partnership where you will be joining hands because it's a government public institution, a big institution where they have a lot of infrastructure and other things also they have. But due to various, various reasons, because uh, the psychiatry may be the, the maybe last thing in their bag. And when we want to do something, actually we wanted to just go and tell them, see, we you have got this provision, you have got this uh, such infrastructure, like big hall you have. Why don't you give us free of cars that haul? So we will invite some people from the community and we do some uh, training program there. We will also ask this government also to come and uh, share one of the sessions which they can able to join. For example, in the under, uh, psychosocial rehabilitation, uh, we have to give some of the social benefits for the people, persons with uh, uh, severe mental illnesses like schizophrenia. But they were not aware, many of the people in the working in the government is not aware what schizophrenia is and what kind of needs they have, how the mm. government can give also. Right. So we join hands with them. We make them understand. We require, we train them also at the super, uh, uh, level one, level two, in a two different layers and tell them this is what is the mentally ill person and this is what is their requirements of also. Hence, there is no quarrel. And we can see that as you know, there is a lot of, uh, uh, initially there was a little bit of, you cannot say no, yeah, just like that they will welcome you. They're not just like they're welcoming you to come and sit and take this money and go. No, it's not like that. We have to tell them, 
there is a person with mental ill mental health issues and how the person is and what kind of issues they have and what what is the rights they have so you have to explain to them about now uh, laws and all these things because they are not uh, they have been doing other thing other activities they are not uh, very less minimal people are, have uh, knocked the door for help so we on behalf of the mentally ill person knocking the door and tell them see look we have 10 people from this area who are suffering with severe mental illness out of which seven definitely required basic needs like you know just having a, a, a basic rice or provisions for them so what the government can do it so through the government we get something through private as we get something we link both of them so that the person with the community gets benefit out of it i see so, yeah yeah so that's the way actually we we are trying to see that how we can we can link the resources very very important one at the community level is the resources may be there and we have to link the services which is available in the government as well as in the private or public also and how to link the both so that the person gets benefit out of that mm-hmm. and have you seen a shift in attitude towards severe mental illness uh what with, can you can you just repeat again yeah ha- have you seen a shift have you seen a change in people's attitude towards those with severe mental illness in india b- because of your trainings your efforts definitely definitely is yes, definitely is yes, no doubt about that definitely is yes. see uh, for example uh, actually i should told you we have been doing this tele psychiatry and mobile tele psychiatry and in fact we are the first one uh, in asia to introduce mobile tele psychiatry i'm sure you know about that okay tele psychiatry so we are the first one in india to start after the tsunami so one of the area which where we had this both uh, fixed line services as well as mobile tele psychiatry in tamil nadu uh, it's called the name called pudukottai one of the one of the backward district in 2010 in the year 2010 when we said said that actually there is no services available in the government the for whole district okay and we have actually if we had to start from scratch and started learning and started taking the household survey door to door we go knock the door and ask for the, do the survey you you went door to door and asked for what yes 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 asking for the person with the uh, just details about the family and also screened for mental illnesses oh okay yeah you'd go door to door and screening for mental illness for screening those that for have mental needs illnesses. yeah yes so wherever possible because it, it takes lot of money and time for you to go and do this uh, uh, initial we did for two years and later we understood that the takes lot of time and energy and money of us so we have shifted to key people survey you shifted to what key informant survey oh okay and how does that work okay so key people will be there for example in a in a village you can find a village head mm-hmm. the village whole village the head is the president of the village is the head of the village okay and you can you can also see that uh, one nurse will be visiting to the village for vaccination other things yeah like that we have something called uh, there are actually 12 people from the government also will be working in the village health department social department and welfare department mm-hmm. for example to identify the uh, mental retardation at the early stage early intervention there's a team from non communicable diseases so you try to first train them sensitize them about mental illness Right yes yeah like in the United States uh there's been a big push for that um it's called integrative behavioral health in the United States because you have physical health services and then mental health services so one of the main ways that we're addressing pe- people with behavioral health issues not getting services is we have the physical health clinicians do screenings for behavioral health So every time a patient goes in to see their primary care physician or a community health program they're screened for behavioral health. Yeah, so very similar. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, uh, it may not be similar because certain things, no, uh, the the clinician, because of overload of their own exercise here in India, that in rural India, uh, they are not doing much. That is supposed to be their job. As per the National Mental Health Program in India, the primary objective is to integrate the mental health into the primary health system. Okay. Yep. Which is nothing but the primary health clinician, as you rightly said, has to screen the person with physical illness as well as with mental illness. If it is a mental illness, they have to uh, they have to treat them at the primary health system itself with the minimal uh, with the, if it is a minimal thing. If they are acutely ill, uh, they have to refer them to the nearest district level hospital or state level hospital. That is there on paper. Okay. What is workable is the question now. Okay. So majority of them, what happens is now in India, we have got something called a non-communicable diseases project. Oh, okay. Where they have to, they have, the team has to go to the house and screen them for blood pressure, blood sugar level, things like that. Yep. And basic examination for breast cancer and all these things. Mm -hmm. So there are actually a few non-communicable diseases in their list. So government, that way actually we feel proud to add, though mental illness is a part of that, but it was not there in the list. Right. Yeah. And we try to add one list, one paper along with their book saying that, please screen for mental illness also. Right. Yeah. And uh, they, since they were not having much training on mental illness, so we train them, we retrain them, the key people who go and do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the village level or the panchayat level, what we are trying to do is that we identify the key people at the top level, middle level and low level. If possible, make them sit all together. Many times it's not possible. So, it is a, for example, uh, the uh, top level people, we can sensitize them for maybe a one hour or two hours program for them. We can send them because they're all busy people. And middle and low people are very, very important people for us because they are the one who was there, who was going to take this cake around the, around the village. Right. Okay. And we'll catch hold of them. We will be increasing the training program for, for three to four days or five days like that. And we'll be having a retraining program for them also. And these, these people were the pillars for us. They do the activities. Along with that, few questions they will ask you. Do you have any depressed mood or suicidal ideas, sleeplessness, things like that. Basic right. things. Do you hear voices, things like that, you know. So they, and they are the people from the same locality. And they know about their village very well. Mm -hmm. In, I'm sure you know about the India caste system also. From the this caste person should not go to other caste person, other caste person should not go to this village also. Uh, okay. So if you if you identify the people from the same locality, you don't have that issues. And more importantly, they know most of that. Uh, most of the issues in the village by these people who are working in the community. So SCARF is trying to identify such key people from the community and take their information as much as possible and make a list based on their needs, rank their needs, try to address them also. For example, uh, when we see some people with the mental illness or depression, anxiety, uh, schizophrenia, all that almost we can treat them at the community level itself. Suppose we see a person with alcohol dependence syndrome, alcohol dependence syndrome or drug dependency. In fact, nowadays, the recent days, we could see a lot of people with uh, social media addiction. Yeah. Okay. So we, we, we have other. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that you screen for that. So you yes. screen <laughs> for social media addiction. Yes, we do. And in yeah. fact, it's our. Uh, Youth mental health team has done an excellent play. See, nowadays you are not able to go on to talk to these young kids. They don't like any lectures. 
Hmm. They don't like anything in lecture form. That's what right. I meant. Yes. Okay. <laughs> am I, am yeah. I right? Yes. yes. And they want most of them in the art form. Okay, Play yeah. method. Yep. Where like TikTok. <laughs> TikTok kind What's of that? things. Like those short TikTok videos. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah TikTok reels like yeah. that. Close the door. Sorry, my daughter's in preparation. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so they, these kids, we also go to various schools, colleges, industries in uh, in and around our uh, catchment area, wherever we work. And we see the rest of the issues also related to that. And we make some small play of three to five minutes or 10 minutes play. Okay. And we'll involve the community in that needs assessment also. We do nowadays the needs assessment also not going and doing with the ticking and the marking and all these things. Just go in a, in a corner where people are uh, gathered, stand there for a while and make a small, make some noise and make some drums and all. Call the people and be part of that and we'll ask them actually what is the issue in the community also. So we one or two places we do like that. We'll introduce ourselves also and then after that, all the place is based on the needs of the community. For example, if drugs is a major issue there, or alcoholism is a major issue there, sometimes uh, sexual abuse is a major issue there. So we, we, whatever is related to our mental health issues or suicide, most of the time you can see that actually in the rural areas and urban areas, suicide is and self-harm is also very, very high. Oh. So we try to address them is one, and we also see that as well, sometimes, for example, I told you, if it is a schizophrenia, minor mental illnesses, the scarf can be able to handle. For alcoholic dependence syndrome or drugs like that, we have some partnering NGOs. We try to refer them also. Mm -hmm. sure. But we do raise awareness and other things from our from, from our this thing, but everything you cannot keep in your bag. Okay, so we are we are trying to see like that, you know, how the uh, uh, community can participate. Right. If you make the community be participate of the program, and they will become the owner of the program. Mm -hmm. And a very very important thing I always tell in my classes and everywhere is that when you want to see the sustainability. Say that again. Sustainability. Right. Yes. And also replicability. When you want to replicate the same method elsewhere, you have to ensure that we should not dictate things. We should go to their level and understand what the problems and how they want the issues also. Yeah. I, I, so I interview uh, healthcare providers in, in uh, several countries. And the most common thing that I hear about what works is by being involved with the very small local communities, getting involved with the small local um, leaders and finding out particularly what are their needs, what works for them, those kind of things, rather than just trying to have like a countrywide approach or region wide approach. Uh, so what you're saying about really understanding the small communities and getting them to um, take ownership and to be a part of it uh, and to work together. Um, yeah, I, I hear that from a lot of different large healthcare providers in different countries. So, yeah, so that, that's good to hear. It's, it's good to hear that there's that common theme of, of what works. Many times actually we have modified, uh, whether it is, for example, most of our research programs also uh, has been funded by the countries outside India. And uh, they also do have a lot of curriculums as well as the manuals prepared and sent by the international team. But whatever we get here, we want to actually just test it and talk to the people 
what the issues are with the youth then. Yeah. And we cannot, you know, westernize. Of course, though we say all of that, actually, nowadays, most of them seems to be, most of them seems to be this thing. But certain things are cultural specific, regional specific. And also, uh, people also uh, in the rural or urban, a lot of specific is there. And accordingly, we will address them also in that in the, in the locality. Yeah. And you've also started to use a lot of technology to provide your services and training and so forth. Uh, so you really implemented a lot of telehealth. Uh, can you share with me what were the needs? Like why, why was implementing telehealth helpful for you? Yeah, so I was telling you about, uh, I'm sure you know about the uh, mental health gap in India. Mm -hmm. Worldwide, I'm sure, I'm sure you know about it. And uh, especially uh, developing countries like India, the scarcity of mental health professional, mental health services in the rural areas are very, very minimal. Okay. So you, you, don't, I have, say, you, don't, have, you do not have enough pro providers. Uh, I think you said it was like one one clinician per thousand people or something like that? Yes, more than that sometimes. <laughs> What's that? Sometimes more than that also. In a uh. month, they'll see that. See, uh, see in, the, in, in India, rural India especially, uh, compare, see in India, rural India, Tamil Nadu is a better state compared to other states. And we have something called a, a district mental health program. I told you already also where you, if there is a psychiatrist in a particular district, they will be having a district mental health team that will be going to various parts of the district. Okay, the, each district will be having around seven to 10 lakhs population. Uh, say that again, seven, seven to, to 10 what? Seven to 10 lakhs of population per district. Okay. Okay, so this population will be, uh, count, uh, if there is no psychiatrist, the district mental health program will be implemented there. And the district psychiatrist, district psychiatrist will be going to one place, to other place, and all these things. So each day, one, one place will be there. That means after 20 days only, if, uh, 15 days only, the uh, same psychiatrist will come to the same place. So in between, they have anything happens, they have to only seek for the psychiatrist when they are visiting to the district headquarters hospital. So when the people with, so having said that, this is definitely happening is much better uh, state in Tamil Nadu uh, compared to other states in India. Uh, but same time, what is it in done, but still we can see that as well, we have seen uh, very, very less professionals about 20 years back in India, in rural India. And that, that expression in 2004 when tsunami struck. And uh, a team from SCAR were visiting to the Rural districts, about six, seven districts, car was going. Like example, Chennai itself was struck by the tsunami, one area, mm -hmm. and also Pondicherry, Kadalur, Nagapattinam, uh, Karekal, and all this thing we were going. And when, when the team, we had a very small team that time in SCARF. We had our own few handful of psychiatrists we had. Half of that will be going to the team like this. Every week they will be going to the community. And they wanted to address these persons uh, suffering with the, uh, people suffering with the mental illness even before tsunami. And after tsunami, there are people with some psychosocial issues. So we wanted to address the, both the team. So hence, almost uh, half of the psychiatrists will be visiting to the field. Hence, we have a scarcity of mental health professionals in our own center itself in SCARF. Hence, what we thought was, we want to do something about it. So how to address this? Okay. So and luckily we had uh, two or three institutions for supporting us during the tsunami time, and they are also willing to support us for the exploring the telepsychiatry. Okay. So see, the, if I want to go to the talk tomorrow, that means tonight I have to travel. I have to travel with my team. I have to leave my private practice. Psychiatrist has to leave the private practice. And the whole day we have to be there and travel, food, the stay. A lot of things has been involved in that. But yeah. nothing. Yeah, and it's not, it's not, it, it's not a short travel, it sounds like. It's not like a half an hour drive, 30 minute drive. No, definitely it not. Sounds definitely like it's not. A, yeah. 
10 that's plus, very, 10 that's plus, very time consuming. 10 plus hours we have to travel. 10 plus yeah. hours. Sometimes so, uh, part of it you have to travel by train, part of it you have to travel by car and then after going there you have to take a bath and then you have to go to the field also again by car and it is scattered around, you know, around as you know, uh, around 40 miles we have to travel. And yeah, to see the so they're, they're the wasting coast. days, days, days of work uh, yes. to travel. Yeah. yeah. So hence, you know, we, we found that was these things was really uh, and also at the same time, when we go there, definitely, yes, we, it is very important to see a person with the uh, mental health issues, uh, even before tsunami or after tsunami also. But same time, what happened to the people who are already with us? We are not able to do justice for them. Now, hence, we have initially yeah, with a small video phone in 2005, we just started. In 2005, we just started. Okay, in a video phone to see the person who, whom he have already seen them in the community. So would it community be using people, would it be using a smartphone? No, no, not not smartphone was not there at all. So when you said it, when you say a video phone, what is a video phone? Video phone is a phone which is used using the technology of ISDN connection. Telephone connection. Telephone connection is called ISDN connection. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're using the the phone service rather yes. than internet, rather than a regular internet service, because oh, they don't gosh. they don't these locations didn't have adequate internet service, but they did have regular phone service. So that's how you did the video call. Yes, those days we don't have the phones. Also, we had the regular phones. We had the regular phones. We never had this uh, digital uh, smartphone those days in 2000, year 2005. I'm talking about about 18 years back. Okay. Okay. We had only, again, this uh, ISDN connection is called a triple line ISDN connection, not single line. Triple line ISDN connection, you had to fee to get a small video in a small uh, integrated video phone. I will probably show, share you the some of the slides. I don't know whether I have it now, and I will one second. Well, if yeah, if you have a picture of it, you can send it to me. I can send it to you. I definitely will do that. So there is a, a video phone, and with that video phone, uh, we used to see the people who are remotely. We have already seen the psychiatrist from here, which has been identified by the community level workers. We train, we retrain the community of our workers as well as we had a, a, a good handful of community volunteers. Okay. So workers are the full paid from us. Volunteers are unpaid by us. Mm -hmm. They have good intention of identifying such people from the community and they want to also share some of these things. He is my neighbor, she is my neighbor and she is suffering with mental illness now. So kindly help us like that. They, they come. We also tell them, please. Uh, we'll get train. We will treat them now, and also we'll tell them uh, the next review dates, follow up dates. And these volunteers keep a note of that, and remind them about these things. Oh wow, that's great. And also we we had something called again one more thing also is you know. We we use their own phones like a button phones. We will set the alarm in that, reminding them about the next dates. We will sending them, for example, after 15 days, you have to come for the clinic. We set them in the same phone. If they have a phone, those days, even the ordinary phone also was this, these people from the rural areas do not have. But some of the volunteers do have this. These volunteers take a note of these patients name and all these things when is the next day review things like that oh Our so, so you also... so you take so you take note uh what kind of technology you're going to use with the patient is that what you're saying not about the technology we will send them about the review dates through sms short messages we'll send them oh okay and the and the you are the short messages is that text messages SMS? Text messages. Text messages. Yep. If they if they own a phone, 
Yeah, if they have a phone with text messaging, yes. you send them text messages. Yes, and uh, one one day yearly also we do send the messages also to them. Okay. So the day when they visit you, they know when is the next day also. We will send them. We will write in a piece in the notebook also. We will be having a, a very good notebook where it will be having the few papers in that. We will write the dates. When is the next review also? We tell them. But due to a lot of reasons, they may not remember all of that. some cannot able to understand also what is written there too mm-hmm. hence we take the community level workers to send a message text them also messages saying when is the review and one day before us we ask them to send the messages to the volunteers the volunteers will go back and tell them tomorrow is your clinic review dates do don't miss it please do visit yeah so do the pa- are are the patients usually friends or do they usually know the volunteers pretty well already no not much okay they're not they're not usually familiar with the volunteers um and See, how many now, no 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 now the present trend almost most of them know okay and how many how many patients is a volunteer helping usually the uh, almost every village will be having one or two volunteers every village will be having three to four patients in a village three to four patients in a village one or two volunteers will be there we identify more volunteers also if they one drop in or one they get married they they will go back and the person will be unmanned okay so every village has about three to four patients three and patients you, and you have about two volunteers who to assist them yes okay yep and these volunteers will be trained very basic things very basic things mm-hmm. see yep. we have a package we have package of training the volunteers mm mm-hmm. training the key people yeah training the community level workers training the nurses training the general doctors yeah like that we have a uh, different different packages where You see, we see a volunteer who wants to help. You need not know about psychosis, neurosis, and all these things. Mm-hmm. Different terminology. We don't need to know about it. Mm-hmm. We basically need to know about a few symptoms. If you find any of these symptoms, please refer them to the clinic. Mm-hmm. Not necessary to only to scar. Please refer them to the public place also. Public uh, the service also when these are around us. Yeah. And scar also is as a policy. We will not start any clinic. if somebody is already existing there for example government team is coming oh right you're not going to you're not going to take the the business from Definitely a community not. if there's already established behavioral health community uh, a, a behavioral health services. provider provider you're, services you're going to yes. refer you to that not, you yeah, yeah, you're going to refer to that behavior uh that provider yep certainly so how how has your telehealth program worked out has, has it been really effective uh the telehealth very much very much very much effective and uh, i do, i do want to share uh, some of the challenge it's not challenge actually uh, merits probably and demerits also for example uh, i was telling about this uh, video phone uh, uh, where we are trying to connect a person who is about uh, 400 kilometers away from us uh so that way uh, our travel has reduced time has reduced the person has been already seen by psychiatrist in the community in the community we have a psychiatrist social worker community level worker volunteers and other government staff also will be helping them referring them educating them and going to the clinic so we will have an one and a half is it will be located in uh, within the uh, catchment area but what happened after some time the people are telling we are unable to see the psychiatrist in a big tv uh-huh. it is very tiny one right so we have connected that uh, smart this for the tv to we have connected one big tv and they could able to see that this was a small thing which is one of the feedback from the community people which we did it later oh, what so the, so the, so the patients wanted to be able to use the big tv rather than the small device yes. is that what you're saying they want they the yes. patients wanted the they wanted screen. they wanted they wanted is yes. yeah so they would go to the local provider to use a big screen to see the psychiatrist yes. 
to psychiatrist yes yeah. and uh, they can also relate very well is because they have already seen them in the community in their own doorstep it was a service provided at the doorstep by scar in the beginning okay slowly same people after three months or six months later you see them through video i see yep so you've already built that relationship yes in person in yes. the community and, but and now, also but now it's telehealth, telehealth. Yep. and also and also for some people periodically we visit them in person also for example after six months once after six months once few people from that were not recovered well and want to see more very very person eye to eye and all we will visit them also and see okay this was happening in the beginning stages of scarf telehealth services later we could see that the new people the first time also the sort of people understand come to the center and see the psychiatrist remotely through video mm -hmm. because the reach was very high people are understanding the value of it okay and as you rightly said okay of course we don't use the word i hear business rather we tell them is word of mouth the good services rendered by scar was known to the community and they started seeking help from us even in this through video even through video otherwise what happens like uh, through video considered as low okay yep. people are thinking is very low why i should see a person through video why can't i see person in, in person they are not comfortable they are not trained see after this pandemic almost most of them are uh, now used to it yeah so at first before the pandemic they were skeptical they were they weren't they weren't so comfortable with telehealth because they weren't sure that they were going to get quality services but after they started to realize after they started to hear from other people that it works really well that they're getting good services now they 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 trust it a lot more um so in the beginning you had to see them on site to build the trust and then do telehealth but now now that people know that it's a good service they can just go directly to telehealth and and they and they like it is that right yes it is right yeah it is using it also they are using it also and one more thing also i want to share with you uh, i don't know whether you have gone through our site where we uh, we have started since 2010 onwards mobile telepsychiatry okay mobile psychiatry mobile telepsychiatry oh okay mobile telepsychiatry okay where we have a customized bus customized bus air conditioned soundproof customized bus will be visiting to the villages mm -hmm. where they are not able to access to the telehealth services yep. suppose for example you set up an office on particular place the people has to travel in very many modes come to the place to access these telehealth services right yep when you have a video phone or in the even the laptop yep okay so you had this skype and all those days yeah now i think we are forget about that <laughs> right okay so in the sky we have a customized bus the bus has got a satellite connection and all okay it goes to interior parts of it where the person is unable to travel in the public transport because he's mm -hmm. mentally ill no public transport will take him right one is stigma and second is people think no they will hit you hug you kiss you or it may sometimes it may be uh, they are aggressive abusive assault you and all they are allowing you to, to get in so that that's important so some people have a stigma around behavioral health mental health services or they think if they go to the provider yeah they're going to keep you or abuse you or charge you a lot of money or something like that but if you come to them with the with the bus the mobile telehealth uh they they much more comfortable with that they are, they are very 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 happy and in fact they are welcoming the services and the most of services none of that we don't even charge any single penny from them mm. not even a 1 rupee we charge them wow 
all services given free of cost. Wow. Not just consultation alone. There are much things happening after the consultation or before consultation. Yeah. Both before and after consultation, there are many things are happening, which includes basic psychoeducation. Basic what education? Psychoeducation. Oh, okay. Be yep. So they can them. learn. They can, so they can learn about their diagnosis, learn about yes. the treatment. Is that right? More than the diagnosis, about uh, the behavior. Why he or she is behaving like that? Okay. Instead, they will be thinking that it is a evil spirit done something against that. Oh, okay. There are a lot of myths and misconceptions about mental illnesses. Sure. There are a lot of myths and misconceptions about mental illness in the public mind. That too, especially in the rural areas, is very, very high. Hence, stigma is also very high. The misconceptions are very, very high. To reduce the both, we have the strongest weapon which we have is the awareness. Mm -hmm. Okay. And second thing is which we have is after giving awareness, you're going and sitting next to them. You have to psychoeducate them about the illness. What symptoms are there? The symptoms, these are the symptoms are related to mental illness. No need about the is a, is a depression, a, a, a schizophrenia, bipolar, things like that. They need to know about this. So if they ask, definitely tell them. It is there after it is their right of know about the diagnosis. Okay, so they need to know about it. What are the, what are the whatever the question they ask, we will definitely tell them, answer to them, and also we will tell them about the illness symptoms. These symptoms are associated with this mental illness, and it is treatable. It is curable also if it is taken proper treatment at the right time. Mm -hmm. And what treatment will be given? This is the treatment will be given. In India, we can also treat the patient. Without knowledge of the patient, also. Okay, we will give them some medicines to the caregivers. The caregivers very smartly mix them in the food and give them also. So they so the bus does the bus carry medication? Yes, it is. Okay. Bus carries medicines. Bus also has got a mental health professionals inside. There are three mental health professionals who will be inside. One is the psychiatric social worker, and one is the manager for the whole clinic where they are the people and down them there is a community level workers community level workers of the particular village identify these people educate the people empower the people tell them about the importance of treatment and then bring them to the clinic mm -hmm. the one even in the same village itself you do all of that you also bring the bus to the place after that they get into the bus they see a psychiatrist who is sitting in Chennai, which is maybe around 200 to 500 kilometers away from them. They just build a rapport. And there is a system where all the data will be reaching to the psychiatrist even before they seeing the psychiatrist patient. They will go through the information which has been sent by the mental health professional, psychiatrist, social worker, psychologist also. And they will read that. They get, get an idea and few things they will talk to the patient and caregiver also who is sitting in the bus, air-conditioned bus, soundproof bus also. Yeah. Okay. So this is really, really very, very luxurious thing actually which we can able to do it in the uh, right. developing yeah. countries like India. If you if you and have any pictures, if you have any pictures of the bus, if you yes, can you send them have. to me, that would be really helpful to, uh, to add definitely, to the video. Definitely I'll do that. Definitely I'll do that. Yep. I can do you. I can. I can probably can uh, see some video link. Also, I will send you YouTube video link about the telepsychiatry. We have taken a small video link also. Oh, that would be very helpful. Okay, YouTube link also we have. You can yep. search about that also. Understanding schizophrenia. Uh, there is a, a link available in that. Or else, I will send you in the mail also about the same. Perfect. So, in the bus after consulting with the psychiatrist, they will give a e prescription which will be printed in the bus itself. Yeah. And the next door, the uh, pharmacist will be dispensing the medicines. Again, 
there is a lot of education will be given about the medicines, how to store medicines, how to give medicines. Don't, if the person has got suicidal ideas and all this thing, I'm sure you all know about it. So we all tell them, no, if it's suicide by this thing and all, uh, don't keep this reach out to the children and also the patient also has suicide ideas. So don't keep them in the preview. So you have to hide them somewhere and give whenever you require things like that. And we will also leave our phone numbers of the local community level workers and psychiatrist who's sitting in Chennai also. Wow. We had on phone, we have a phone also. If they have any disturbance to after taking medicines, side effects. So side effects like you know, EPS, extra periminal syndrome, or any other issues also is there. And they can contact the emergency psychiatrist. That's the emergency telephone number also left to them. And, and everything is printed in the book, which is given in the, as a prescription. Oh, okay. Wow. So they can just dial that number and talk to the psychiatrist who's sitting in Chennai and who treated others for the patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're bringing, you're bringing the clinic to their doorstep. Exactly. Um, so you probably, you probably have been helping many people who would never have gotten help. Yeah, you're right. You're very yeah. short and correctly telling, yes. Wow. And this is the way actually we, we really see the people uh, uh, also the help seeking behavior also increased after that. So they see people, such people getting benefited, or not only just treatment alone, uh, we go to the doorstep, talk to them, educate them, empower them, and we, would never, we don't force them. We never force them. It's very important thing what we do is we don't force them. Sure. Uh, there, there might be, there is a big village. There if you did, there if you did, then they would tell that to other people and Don't it would ruin it. the reputation. Uh, but the reputation that you're building, that you're very helpful, you're not going to be forcing them to do anything. Um, it's, it's a good quality service, even though it's telehealth, that, that word of mouth, like you said, is, is what's really helpful. It sounds like. Now we can see internationally people are adopting that. Oh, okay. even in India, even in India, Government of India is a big body by itself. Uh, the most of their clinics now run through telepsychiatry. And they do use our name as the reference in their, in their wherever they use, they use their uh, scarf name. We feel proud and we feel happy because no other people are uh, taking such challenges in the beginning of uh, trying out innovative methods in the rural areas and delivering the mental health services. Yeah. Because this is highly stigmatized. As I told you in the beginning, it's highly stigmatized. And which is very, very low money also is allotted for mental health. That way, actually, I also feel proud uh, to be heading the department for the more than 20 years plus. Um, so just, just to summarize, uh, Scarf India started focusing on schizophrenia specifically because it it is such a challenging, it's such a challenging disease to live with. Um, and then, uh, and then you provide research um, and training, and <clears throat> you've identified some real challenges in, in India, which is um, uh, st the stigma of mental health. Those with severe mental health issues were not receiving the basic needs that they needed. Uh, they were treated differently. And one of the main solutions is to train people to inform them. Uh, to reduce that stigma, change people's attitude, and then overcoming barriers to access, uh, a, a significant shortage of behavioral health clinicians for the population that needs help. And then <clears throat> really collaborating with the government and private organizations, bringing people together, um, and then really embedding yourself in small communities working with the community leaders, uh, screening, identifying those in need, and then realizing the barriers to treatment, uh, maybe uh, transportation, not having providers in the area, or fear, fear of getting behavioral health services. So you created a real trust in communities, a trust with the patients, and then provided direct access to behavioral health using the video phones, and then the mobile 
telepsychiatry through the vans. Uh, yeah, you guys have incredible, incredible the amount of work you all have done. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a great example um, of what other other communities can do the same thing. It sounds like it takes a lot of work bringing together a lot of different people, a lot of different resources to collaborate with one another. Um, but the impact is really significant. So yeah, Rao, I really appreciate the work that you and Scarf India are doing. And thank you very much for sharing all of this with us. Thank you also very much for uh, like uh, lighting time for us. And we're very happy to share our small, uh, within a, one hour actually could able to share uh, the questions which you asked and also what is the experience which we have. A very, very natural form. There are many things which we are doing. And we also want to share our uh, all the success as well as the challenges to the world so that I know they can take a better step forward to help the people who are in the needy people in the uh, areas wherever they work, not only in India, wherever they work, wherever there is a low socioeconomic category or low income category countries and all, we can adopt these methods uh, so that we can reach more people and teach more people also. That's what we believe. And uh, thank you very much for listening to me and uh, do share if you have any questions and we are happy happy to answer to your questions too